takes a real, true person who loves their country to willingly put their life on the line to serve. So we want to respect those men and women who gave all. Some gave all and all gave some. A lot of people didn't take it home when they went to a foreign land to fight for our freedom. But we thank God for those who made it back. And we thank God for the service those rendered that gave their life in that service. But we're so thankful this morning that God has allowed us to come in the house one more time and be able to lift them up and give them thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. This morning we just want to lift them up, praise them for all that he has done and all that he has done.
Right. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming mm -hmm. in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own, excuse me, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. The word of God for God's people. Amen. 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 to give a tribute to 
members, loved ones, um, loved ones that serve. And today we would like to give a special tribute to you. A tribute to our soldiers. We just want to say thank you for all the things you do, for all your sacrifices and all that you go through, for wanting to serve others, for giving all your best, for showing such commitment no matter what the test. For always showing courage and never being weak, showing strength in troubled times when freedom is what we seek. All right. For being an inspiration no matter when you try. For, for, for striving to keep our nation, one nation, under God. Amen. So today, we tribute you and we salute you and thank you for all that you do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Yeah, we, we had a, a bag for Willie and also Mother for Pastor Kater, but they are not here, so I just have them in my office. Last time. Go ahead, Mother Spear. Give 
it back to God of our earth. So at this time, we'll ask everyone to stand, face the wall, because he said, bring your time to the storehouse.
his goodness. And he has enabled us to reassemble Amen. in the house of the Lord. Amen. Prayer time. Amen. For all of us in the building, we all can pray one for another. Amen. Jesus has already commanded that, that we do that. Amen. When we pray for one another, we pray for strength and guidance. God, you always will come to our rescue. Amen. Let us remember those that are sick from the bed of affliction, those that have lost loved ones this morning, those that already have lost loved ones. Amen. Let us lift them up in our prayer time. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, as we come, right. and the Father, we come knowing no other God call upon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this golden opportunity Amen. that you have allowed me to come to this place again. Yes. Heavenly Father, that so much has already transpired already. Yes. Heavenly Father, now through this week. Yes. But Heavenly Father, you look over the golden moments yes. and spoke to move on a few days alone. Yes. Heavenly Father, you give me this opportunity, to, Heavenly Father, to stand behind this secret desk. And the Father, we call upon your holy and everlasting name. Right. And the Father, we thank you for on right. last night. Right. And the Father, you allow me to sleep. Right. You allow me to wake right. up right. early this morning. Right. And the Father, you enable me to close my life. Right. And the Father, you close me in my right mind. Right. And the Father, we thank you right now. Right. And the Father, there's so much I can't thank you for. Right. But then the Father, you know my heart, yeah. and you know it's my mind. Right. And the Father, we pray for this church. Yes. Yes. And the Father, we pray that you to continue allowing them to grow in your grace. Yes. In the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And the Father, that's all the yes. that us in here this morning. Yes. And the Father, I know that you know name and name. Yes. And the Father, that's our children. And the Father is going to be screwed right now. Yeah. And the Father God and me in the yeah. end church. And the Father is screwed, you know where trouble is at. Yeah. And the Father, I ask you right now, from yeah. time to time, the God around the school yeah. house. Yeah. And the Father, you, you God around my home, yeah. and you don't allow no one to come in and bring in. Yeah. And the Father, I look to God, and there's none like you.
shield. Right. Thank God for these great people of this great church. Right. To our mothers and to our ushers and to all of you God's people. We just thank God for you this morning. Right. This morning we're going to be coming from the book of Deuteronomy. And we're going to begin in the ninth chapter of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Verses 1 through 6. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Verses 1 through 6. When you have a six o'clock, I'll stand in Amen. Chapter 9, Deuteronomy, verse 1 through 6. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Here, O Israel, mm -hmm. you are to cross over the Jordan today and go into dispossessed nations greater and mightier than yourself. See these great and fortified up to heaven. Mm -hmm. A people great and tall, yeah. the descendants of Achan, who you know, That's right. and of whom you have heard it said. Who can stand before the descendants of Achan? And excuse me. Therefore, understand today that the Lord your God is He who goes over before you right. as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. Mm -hmm. So you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said to you. Do not think in your heart. After the Lord, your God has cast them out before you, uh -huh. saying, Because of my righteousness, uh -huh. the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart right. that you go in to possess their land but because of their wickedness mm -hmm. of these nations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you. That's right. And that he may fulfill the word which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore understand mm -hmm. that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness. Yeah. For you are a stiff-necked people. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may have This morning, I want to talk to you briefly from the subject. The blessing is not by your righteousness. It's by God's grace. All right. The blessing is not by your righteousness. It is by God's grace. How many know that grace has nothing to do with us? It is by God's choice alone that he chooses to have favor on us. It doesn't matter how good we think we have been, it is up to God how he chooses to bless us. Israel was a stubborn people who provoked God at every turn. They rejected his commands, they complained about the food he provided for them in the wilderness, and they kept looking back to the place they begged to escape from. In spite of all their wrongdoing and rejection of God's way, God still honored his promise. How often have we done some things we should not have done and gone some places we had no business going, but somehow God blesses us in spite of our wrongdoing and the wrong we have done. It's not because of our worthiness or that we was worthy of being blessed. It's because of God's grace. Amen. Israel was undeserved, but God had made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God was going to honor his promise to their forefathers. How many know that we are the recipients of promises made long before us by our parents and foreparents whom God said he would bless and those blessings that we receive 
are generational blessings that are passed from generation to generation. We're still standing on the promises that God made to those who fought for our civil rights. From those who were in stocks and chains that were brought from one country to this one. We're still hanging on by those promises that God made to them. That he would protect and that he would bless their people. God knows how and when to bless us. God knows when to move us at the right time. Prepare us for the blessing that he's going to bless us with. And have us know that it was him that blessed us and not ourselves. God knows what we need at the right time and when to give it. So the first thing we see here in this particular scripture, we see that God knows the right time to cross us over. God knows the right time when to move us into a new place for his purpose. Israel was crossing over the Jordan from the wilderness into the promised land. They were going from a dry desert place to a vibrant land flowing with milk and honey. On the other side of the Jordan lived the people much bigger and much stronger than Israel. They were marching into a land with filled with people they could not handle on their own. If y'all remember the reports when spies were sent out into the land, and they sent out those spies and they came back afraid and scared like they're giants over there, and we just can't win. But then there were only two that came back and said, we can take it. We can win. These people were so afraid that they were willing not to even put up a fight. But they had forgotten that God said that he was going to give them the land. They was not ready at the time for this elevation that God was going to usher them into. When God elevates you to a new level or move you from one place to the next, there are some bigger and stronger adversaries at the place of your elevation. There's a whole saying I heard a Pentecostal preacher say, he said that where there is a new level, there is a new devil. God is moving you from one level to the next, and at that next level, there are going to be some enemies much stronger yeah. and bigger and faster than you are. God knows the perfect time when to elevate you. He gives you just enough of what you need for the transition. But not too much for you to take credit for yourself as if you've done it on your own. God knows how to move you into place, give you exactly what you need for where you're going, but also show you his power in making sure that everything is laid out for you. God goes ahead of us to make our transition smooth. There are some things that we don't see as we're across the road, but God has already moved it out of our way that our transition won't be interrupted by those who wish to do us harm. God knows the right time and the right place, when and where to move us. When God elevates us, he never moves us ahead of schedule. But it's always in his time and it is always the right time. The second thing we see here in the scriptures is that God goes ahead of us to make Preparation. God will make sure the place that He has prepared for us is ready to be occupied. God will never send us in ahead of schedule. When God gives us something, He ensures that we are ready to receive it. I know sometimes God will give us a glimpse of where He is taking us and we want to get there right away. But when we're looking at where God is trying to take us, we're not ready to get there. Yeah. So God has to prepare us to the place where he is taking us. And sometimes it may take a couple of weeks, it may take months, or it may even take a few years. Yeah. But while he is getting us ready, we have to understand and know that God will always let us in at the right time. Amen. Never a hell schedule. Amen. Although they have spent 40 years 
in the wilderness. They was not ready when they came out of Egypt to enter into the promised land. God had to get some stuff out of them before they were going into the promised land. As a matter of fact, some folks had to die out before the others could even go in. God is going to make sure that everything is primed and ready before we enter in. God goes in and removes those stumbling blocks that will cause us to stumble. The people of the land were a wicked people. And Israel was easily influenced. They soak up bad habits like a sponge. This led to God deciding to drive the people out. This is how Israel ended up being blessed with houses they did not build and land they did not teach. God gave them all that the inhabitants had and they didn't even have to break a sweat to get it. God would take you up to places and put you in positions that you are not qualified for. And people will be trying to figure out how in the world that you can get where you are. And they're trying to see how in the world that you made it. But yet and still, they don't know it was all by God's grace. Yes, yes. You know how it is. You, you worked on a job 30, 40 years. Yeah. Been there putting in long, hard hours. And all of a sudden, somebody comes in, they only been there six months, and then they get jumped over you. You're trying to figure out how in the world did this person get elevated over me? Sometimes it's only by God's grace. They may not even have the, the qualification, they may not even have. The, the years spent put in. Yeah. But God has a way of moving people into place. That's right. And we're still scratching our heads trying to figure out how to make it. Sometimes it is beyond our thinking and beyond our imagination how God moves things into place. A lot of times it ain't got nothing to do with us. But it's all by God's grace. Sometimes we still try to figure and wonder like, I don't know how I'm going to make these ends meet or how I'm going to pay these certain bills or how I'm going to make my money. But yet God makes it a way to where every bill has been paid and then you still got something left over. Yeah. That's the way God works. That's how he does. That's how God blesses. And it ain't got nothing to do with us. It's all about his grace. He decides when he wants to and how he wants to bless us. We all know we ain't got it all together. We still do some stuff we ain't got no business doing. Say some things and hang with the wrong folks. But yet God still has mercy and grace upon us. That's how he does. And he lets us know, when I bless you, it's because I will so and not because you were so good. See, Israel had this habit of thinking that they deserved everything they got that they was good and so special. Moses had to tell them, you ain't perfect. It ain't because you were so good, but it's only by God's grace. They had to be reminded, this ain't got nothing to do with you. God had a promise that he made and God was going to see that that promise was fulfilled. The third thing we see, God will remind us that the blessing is by his grace alone. Amen. The Lord blesses us according to his discretion. We can do nothing to earn the blessings of God. But it is by God's grace that we are blessed. We have to be reminded that there's nothing good within us. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. But it's by God's choice and his choice alone that he chooses to shower us with his blessings. Amen. If you want to look at somebody's life, look at them. Oh, David done a lot of great things. But as many great things that David done, he made a lot of bad decisions. But yet God still blessed him. God still poured out his blessings upon him because he had a good heart, he had good intentions, but he made some poor and bad choices. Bad choices. But God blessed him anyhow. And God said his throne would reign forever. We, we, we got a lot of good people. And we have a lot of good people who make some mistakes. And we have to understand and realize we didn't get here by ourselves. But it's only by God. 
God's grace that we've got to where we are. We're not that special. We're not that good. But it's only by God's love and grace and how much he cared for us that he has truly blessed us. Amen. Moses had to tell him, don't think that you're from yourselves that you drove these niggas out of this land because he was good and righteous. He said, no, it's because these folks are wicked and God wanted to get them away from around you. Because he knows you was around them, you was going to pick up their bad ass. Right? So he had to tell it to him three times, it's not because of you, but it's all because of God's grace that you occupy and would have this land. God knows who needs to be around us and God knows who needs to be out of our atmosphere. That's right. God will move some folks out of our way so we don't pick up their influence or get their habits. God will drive away bad influence from around us to keep folks from corrupting us. Because we, 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 like, we like to be like and we want folks to like us and sometimes when the folks who want to like us, we end up doing stuff we should not do because we want their favor. And then we get caught up in something we can't get ourselves out of. It. All because we want them to like us. But some folks have to be moved. God has to take them out of that atmosphere so we don't have no contact with them. Because he knows that we end up falling in that trap. And Satan always going to throw somebody in their way to try to make you fall and stumble. That's why God had to cleanse the land of those niggas to get them out. Because he had already dealt with these folks back and forth with these bad attitudes. They're complaining about everything that he's blessed them with. About these folks hollering about, we had it much better in Egypt. You brought us out here in this heat to die. God had enough of but God said, I'm going to honor the promise that I made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to do what I said I was going to do. And I'm going to make sure that you are not influenced by these natives that know nothing about me. And you're going to pick up their bad habits. But we already know the story. Israel found himself doing the same old thing again. And they had to be reminded, it ain't about you. It's always about his grace. Amen. Amen. We're so fortunate and so blessed that in spite of all the wrong that we have done, God loved us enough that he was willing to look past our shortcomings. Amen. Amen. Look past all the wrongs we've done. Look past the folks that we have hurt. Look past all the stuff that we have planned to do against somebody. Look at all that and decide, I'm going to show some grace and mercy on you that you can have another opportunity. Amen. Another opportunity to get it right. Amen. God blessed us with his son. Amen. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Not because we were good. That's right. But because he saw our need for us. Amen. Amen. He saw our need. And he met our need by sending his son down from 40 into generations. He sent his son to be born a woman. To experience life like you and I. So we would have no excuse to say, well, Lord, I couldn't help it. You know how hard it is. Jesus walked as we walk. Jesus lived as we live, yet without sin. Showing us there is a better way. He showed us that we can live a life that is not corruptible. We can keep God's law and keep his love and have peace with our fellow man. And it ain't got nothing 
so we can have an opportunity in life. Yes. I thank God for the sacrifice. Yes. I could have done it on myself. I don't know how to lay my life down for some of y'all. Some of y'all are some mean folk. You know, I, I enjoy life as well, but I don't see myself giving up my life Well, you can have. You know, I might do a little time, but I ain't, I ain't going to take a death sentence.
So why not have your business fixed on this side? That's right. Then when you transition to the other side, yeah. you already taken care of. Amen. Because there's a whole lot of folks I want to see again. That's right. And I want to rest in his presence. That's right. right. His word is true. Yes. Ain't no fairy tale in his Bible. No. But it's all true. Amen. Right. Either you're going to reign with him or you're going someplace else that's not going to be no reign. You're going to reign in torment. But I'd rather be with him. That's right. He's already paid the price. Yes. Why suffer needlessly when you don't have to? That's right. He's done it for us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Church's motto is, we are a loving church that strives to uplift, enrich, and serve our community through God's great commission. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Again, let us sit here to our announcements. 
Again, let us uh, thank God for all of you. Thank God for our veterans, those men and women who served and gave their lives in service to this country. Um, like I said, a lot of families are represented here by someone who served. That's right. And a lot of times, they don't get the appreciation that they deserve. That's right. That's true. But we just want to thank them for the sacrifices that they've given and the honor them for what they've done. They didn't have to do it, but yet they chose to serve to make sure that we have the freedoms that we have. So we just want to be thankful and appreciative for what these men and women have done for us. Amen. Amen. Again, let us continue to uh, reach out to all those families who are bereaved. Let us continue to uh, check in on our city shut in to make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, and just, just reach out and check on folks that you have not seen in a while. You don't know what people are going through. Sometimes they may not tell you anything. But just let them know that you care about them and that you're just reaching out just to check on them. Show them some love. Amen. With that being said, let us all stand. Let the church sing.